So now let's start this presentation with a very basic introduction to Power BI Desktop. What is Power BI Desktop? Why did Microsoft come up with this standalone application? As I'm telling in the keywords itself, it is a standalone application. That means it has it has got nothing or no other application to be dependent on and it has got its own dedicated server where you can deploy or publish all your work that is your reports. So Microsoft has introduced this Power BI desktop in 2015 because they wanted to have something competitive tool in the market which can have a very powerful interaction interactive dashboards can be built using various visualizations. We already have Excel services and we have already seen in the previous version and the previous session that we have something called Excel Power BI. This Excel Power BI is nothing but it's a combination of Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map and Power Query. All these four add-ins are using Excel as a plot platform and then you are building some interactive reports there. So this Power BI desktop which got introduced in 2015 has got all these features inbuilt in it and you can directly publish these reports onto its dedicated server. The main advantages of this Power BI desktop is you have a faster and easier access to your data. It is a live 360 degrees view of your business and there is a lot of exploration and data discovery available on this Power BI desktop. You can get the data from any kind of an insights or from any devices and the collaboration across your organization that is sharing your reports or your work across your organization is very easy and anyone can visualize the data and also they can analyze the data easily. I can say it's a self-referencing like you know self-service BI tool and it's very easy to understand. Now what is this Power BI desktop? So Power BI desktop can be easily downloaded. It's, it's free version. You have a very basic free version that can be easily downloaded with suppose 32 bit and 64 bit applications. As I told you, we can consider this Power BI desktop as a combination of Power Pivot, Power View and Power Query. So that means one standalone application has three different interfaces included in it. Here you can build a tool which is basically used to create interactive reports and with the help of multiple visuals that are distributed across multiple pages and then you'll be publishing your reports onto Power BI services from where you can share your work with your organization easily. But the very last point here which is very important is updates on monthly basis. As this Power BI desktop is an emerging tool in the market, Microsoft is thriving a lot to make a lot of updates on this tool and make it better each and every day. So every month you have an update on this particular tool and you have to keep a track of yourself or what are the updates that are happening on this tool so that you can know what new features have been added and you can use those features in implementing some better visualizations for your reporting. So to just talk about this Power BI desktop in brief, as I told you this Power BI desktop is a self-service BI tool. So what I mean by self-service BI tool here is whenever we talk about BI, we know that it's a combination of SSIS, SSAS and SSRS. SSIS is used for integration. So here Power BI can also be used for integration in the sense you can pull the data from different sources and you can use this tool, the Power Query, which is inbuilt in it to transform the data, to model the data and form a one basic data model for you. Whereas SSAS, which is an analysis services here, you can analyze the data on your Power BI desktop after you create the model by adding different columns to it, like different features to it and customize the columns. And finally, SSRS, which is your reporting services. Here we are using various visualizations that are available to build interactive reports. So that is the reason I'm calling this tool as a self-service BI tool, but still it is a standalone application. As we got to know the very basic introduction about Power BI Desktop and why do we use them, let's now see what are the different sources that we can bring the data into this Power BI Desktop. So before even I get more further into the details of this particular video or maybe any other sessions, there is a disclaimer or there is a, some information which I would like to share with you guys. The first thing here is, as I told you, there is an update on this Power BI desktop. Since the day one, it has been launched. Every month there is an update. So whatever the features that you are seeing here on these PPTs, maybe it related to the sources or maybe related to some other properties, which are 
which I said it's not possible at that time are now currently possible. So as I cannot keep on updating this PPTs, this PPTs holds the very basic information and all the details that are required to understand about Power BI desktop. But all the new features and any updates that is happening on that monthly basis will be discussed in very detail in the Q&A sessions after every session has been done during the TDP. So now let's see what are the different sources from which you can bring in the data. As you're seeing here, while this PPT has been created during that version, we had these were the some of the sources from where we were pulling the data. And as you see, there is a lot of cr cross platform sources from which we can pull the data into our Power BI desktop. So even I have made an update here because every month with the new updates they are releasing, there can be more than two sources that are added to this list. So how Microsoft makes a decision of adding a new update is basically if you have any question or if you feel OK, this feature would be really good if it was part of Power BI desktop, you can directly post it on the Microsoft website or the Microsoft blog so that they take that into consideration and they'll see the percentage of people asking for that kind of an option and they will immediately implement that into your Power BI desktop in the next month updates. That is how quick they are maintaining this updates and maintaining this tool in the market and that's the reason this tool is now currently I can say it is leading the market and it is like used as a most powerful dashboard tools. So now before we get into more details about the sources, let me just introduce you to the Power BI desktop interface. So this is how your Power BI desktop is going to look like after. So once the Power BI has been installed on your machine, it is going to create a very small shortcut on the desktop. And when you double click on the desktop shortcut, it opens this interface where it will pop up with a sign in option and we will be providing you with the credentials to sign in. Only after you sign in with your respective credentials, as you see here on the top, I'm signed in with my credentials. You will be able to do any kind of administration part on this Power BI desktop. So now we have got a very brief understanding of why we are using this Power BI. What is the major introduction and also like what is the major purpose of Power BI? Now let's get more further into this video and see how a data can be gathered from different sources. So on this Power BI desktop on the very home page here, you have something called get data. Whenever you click on that get data here, it opens the most common data sources that are frequently used to bring the data. As you see, these are not only the only sources that we have, but these are the most commonly used sources. Whenever you click on the more option here, it will navigate us to a separate page where you have a list of data sources. So all these data sources are then categorized as multiple folders here and whatever the source that is of your interest from where you want to bring in the data. You can simply click on that particular data source. For example, we have the all category where all the sources are here and you have a file category where you have different sets of files and PDF is a recent update in Power BI which was added. And you have an another option which is called folder here in case if you want to loop through a particular folder and load all the files that you have inside that folder. Even you can use this feature called folder. Apart from that, you have CSV file or Excel file. We will be talking about each one of these objects, not like each and every data source, but most of the time we'll be discussing in our Power BI sessions about Excel, CSV, some database files and some Azure online services and other files. Under the databases, it supports a lot of cross platform databases here. As you see, we have SQL, Analysis Services, Oracle, IBM, NetEza, Teradata, Sybase, SAP HANA. You have so many types of data sources and databases from where you can bring in the data. Apart from that, a new category has been introduced, which is called a Power BI category, where you have Power BI data sets and Power BI data flows. We'll be discussing more in detail in the administration part of Power BI. What is this data set and a data flow? Apart from that, an important category here is Azure. We all know that Azure is a cloud computing tool. So in Power BI, it will even allow us to bring in the data from this Azure cloud where you can bring in the data from an Azure database, data warehouse or analysis services. Once you guys finish with the Azure training, we'll be discussing in more detail. How do we connect this Azure databases to our Power BI desktop? Apart from that, we have online services where you can bring in the data from Facebook, GitHub or Dynamics or even Salesforce. If you have such kind of data, you can bring in the information from this online services. And if you know some R scripting and Python scripting, you can use the other components here and you can bring in the data by writing a R or Python script. 
so here we these sources will be added on a monthly basis depending on the updates that are available on that particular month our interest now currently is sql server database to move forward with our practical so i'm just selecting the sql server database and hitting the connect option When you hit the connect button, it will take us to this particular window where you have different options that we need to discuss. Here you have to enter the server name. That is from what particular server you want to bring in the data into the database and get connected with your Power BI desktop. And the database name here is optional. If you don't know the database name, you can directly you can directly select any other. Uh, just give the server name instead of selecting the database name so that. it will directly show you all the databases that are related to another particular server what we have to talk majorly here is the data connectivity modes so what are these data connectivity modes inside your power bi desktop to just summarize we totally have three types of data connectivity modes in power bi desktop that is import direct query and connect live import and direct query options are available for your rdbms which is your sql server databases whereas import and connect live are available from your ssas which is multi dimensional or tabular models so we'll be discussing in more detail about direct query and connect live in the further sessions but here i'm just going to give you a very basic introduction about import and direct query as we are getting connected with the sql server database an import option here is nothing but it is literally importing the data whatever you have at your source level into your power bi cache so for example let's say here power bi uses a compressing methodology which we need to talk first so whatever the data that you are bringing in from the source power bi compresses that that means it zips it and it is going to put it into the power bi cache and whatever the data that you have imported and which is part of your power bi cache can only be used for your analysis and build multiple reports on top of that but here whenever we are using an import mode there is a constraint of memory because imported data purely depends on how much memory size your laptop or your particular machine has if you have a very big memory you can import large set of data but you have a limited memory you have to see how much data you are importing as such there is like you know no limitation i can say at this point like as i said it's purely depends on the laptop memory size here you can use import for smaller data analysis let's say for larger data analysis where you have like 10 gigabytes of or 15 gigabytes of data your memory may not support at that particular situation so in that situation you will be using the second option which is a direct query inside the direct query what will happen is the source is intact we are not bringing in any data all we are doing is just we are making a direct connection to the source so that it is directly pulling the data into the reports so here you do not have any kind of memory constraint as i told you we'll be discussing more about this direct query options in the next sessions so after you choose what is the respective data connectivity mode you want to choose the next option that you have here is advanced options here under the advanced options if you don't want to bring in individual table into your model what you can do is you can directly write a sql statement here and bring in all the tables at once so it's primarily a developer's wish and how they want to design the model whether they want to choose an import with a sql statement or import with the list of tables that they want to bring in from the source so to just move on further with this practical i'm giving the server name as dot which is my local host and i'm not writing any sql statement at this point and i'm just using an import option and hit the okay button after you hit the okay button on the previous window it will now take us to the navigator window where it is going to show you all the databases available under that particular server as you have not specified any database name it will open this navigator pane for us but for some of you as you are using the power bi desktop for the very first time before even opening the navigator window it may pop up with a windows credential information to ask you to verify the credentials whether you want to use a windows or you have any specific credentials that you want to use to access this source from where you want to bring in the data so once you verify the credentials then again it will take you back to this navigator window